5 in high definition. Taking action, getting results. This is News Channel 3 at 6. News Channel 3 staying on top of breaking news in Tennessee where officials say two National Guardsmen have been shot by one of their own. It happened just after noon today near a naval base in Millington, Tennessee. Jackie Morlock is live in the control room, and Jackie, you have more details. What can you tell us about this? Well, our colleagues at WREG have been out of the scene following the story all afternoon. Now we're beginning to hear from people who witnessed some of what happened. U.S. Navy officials, along with Army officials and local police, are investigating. That shooter reportedly may have been a disgruntled employee, but the motive hasn't been confirmed just yet. Two Tennessee National Guardsmen rushed to a hospital. U.S. Navy officials say both were shot by a fellow Guardsman. It happened here at the National Guard Recruiting Center near the Naval Support Activity in Millington just before 1 o'clock. News Channel 3 sister station WREG has been following that story there. They report one Guardsman was shot in the leg and the other in the foot. Right now, Navy officials say the shooter is in custody. The Navy facility was on lockdown and people reportedly told to shelter in place for about 20 minutes. Both the U.S. Navy and U.S. Army are working with local officials to investigate. I seen one soldier run out the front door and he ran down the hill and he jumped in the ditch and I was like, you know, curious about what's going on and he got on the cell phone and he was, I guess he was contacting the police. And uh, I start driving up and I seen two other soldiers fall on the ground out here right in front of the building and it looked like they had blood on the back of their uniform. This shooting comes just six weeks after Aaron Alexis shot and killed 12 people and hurt three others at the Washington Navy Yard. Alexis worked as a government contractor and was a Navy veteran. He was taken down by police. Navy officials say the two shot are suffering from non-life-threatening injuries and will be okay. We will, of course, continue to bring you new, new details on this investigation as they come in. In the control room, Jackie Morlock, News Channel 3. As we said, News Channel 3 is staying on top of this breaking news, and you can too. Just download the News Channel 3 app on your smartphone today and get updates to stories as soon as they come into the newsroom. Well, we woke up to some cold temperatures across Hampton Roads, really feeling like fall, so this is perfect. People in Old Town Portsmouth, they started doing some pumpkin picking and some carving out there, and it's only going to get even more fall like oh, kind of feeling like almost winter to I was going to say I am <laughs> feel a little winter like this morning especially the 80 degree mark so a big swing to talk about in our seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes closing arguments just wrapped up in the murder trial of Kyle Langreeder Langreeder he is accused of killing Navy veteran Charles Chick Silva News Channel 3's Lori Simmons is live at the Chesapeake Courthouse so Lori do we know how soon the jury could start deliberations yeah, Kurt, they will start first thing tomorrow morning. They chose to go home for the night. Who can blame them? It's probably going to be a little bit before they make a decision. But today, more than a year after the beating of Chick Silva, Kyle Langrader finally got to tell his side of the story. Prosecutors say he was involved in a three on one attack on the Vietnam vet and Langrader admits that he was there, but that he only punched the man in his jaw and that the other two men involved did the brunt of the damage. And today, prosecutors got to cross examine him. Colin Grader says he rode his ATV too many times to count on the paths around the Chesapeake Executive Airport and never thought twice. You had a problem this time, right? Langrader says that's when 77-year-old Charles Silva warned him he was trespassing, threatened to call police, and then fired a warning shot as he was riding away on his ATV. Furious Prosecutors concert. wondered why he would want to go back after so getting safely home. Mr. Silva is not threatening to you at all at that point, is he? No, sir. In fact, you can't even see Mr. Silva. You don't call the police, do you? But Langrader did go back to airport property after he says his friends jumped on his four-wheeler to ride, regardless of Silva's warning. As for the punch that Langrader threw at Silva after his gun was ripped away by the other men... At this point, Mr. Silva does not threaten to shoot you, does he? No, sir, he just went in charge of that. Didn't threaten to cut you? No, sir. Didn't threaten to punch you? But prosecutors again brought up Kyle's Facebook post the night after the attack about dusting someone. You let everybody on Facebook know how you handled Mr. Silva, aren't you? 
not too many people know about the situation, but we're just trying to be cool and look out and move. Now, again, the judge threw out the first degree murder charge, saying that there was not enough evidence presented by the prosecution for premeditation in this case. So the jury will only be able to consider a second degree murder charge, but then they can always choose to convict Langrader on a lesser charge like voluntary manslaughter. So, again, they will start their deliberations tomorrow morning, and they expect to have a verdict sometime tomorrow. And, of course, we'll be here for it all like we've been here all week. But we're now reporting live in Chesapeake. I'm Lori Simmons, News Channel 3. Norfolk's top prosecutor arrested after he was stopped by state police, refused a sobriety test, and was carrying a loaded gun. News Channel 3's Gabriella DeLuca has more. No one answered the door at Norfolk Commonwealth Attorney Greg Underwood's home today, the day after he was arrested for driving drunk in possession of a firearm while intoxicated. Last night, he smelled like alcohol, had slurred speech, was swaying back and forth, and told a state trooper he had been drinking, according to court documents. That state trooper says he saw Underwood drive through a construction zone to exit 264 on Brambleton. And when the trooper pulled the Commonwealth attorney over, he says he smelled like alcohol and refused a sobriety test. That's when they arrested Underwood in Norfolk, then took him to Virginia Beach to avoid conflict of interest. Underwood refused to take a field sobriety test, as well as a breathalyzer when he got to jail. Underwood, who has been Commonwealth attorney since 2009, hasn't said anything today about the charges against him. He's running unopposed in the upcoming election. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office issued a statement saying they will not be involved in the prosecution of this case. No word yet on if a special prosecutor will be appointed or if since these charges are all misdemeanors, the case will be handled without a prosecutor. As we said, Underwood hasn't said anything publicly today about the allegations against him, but in that statement from his office, there was a promise that work will, work will continue uninterrupted. Gabriela DeLuca, News Channel 3. In Norfolk, things are getting back to normal now on the campus of Old Dominion University after two bomb threats caused an evacuation. News Channel 3's Jackie Fay is joining us live with the details. Jackie? Back to normal now, but earlier I will tell you that here at the Webb Center, each time students would walk in front of it, an officer would yell, get back. Now after the bomb threat, the student union here was closed down for hours as police made sure it was safe. We just all grabbed our things and left, and we saw the bomb squad, no, it was Homeland Security come in, and then we saw the sniffing dogs, and they told us it would be several hours before we can actually get back in our building. Students were forced out of a building at the center of campus after two bomb threats were made anonymously on websites. Campus police would not say which sites, but said they did not want to take any chances. It definitely was a little scary, you know, like we didn't know if something was going on like right then and there. We had to get out like immediately or if it was just like a precaution. Students and faculty all got an email about what was going on, saying the building was cleared in an abundance of caution. Police brought in dogs to search the building. Nothing was found. And after four hours, students were allowed back in. It was scary though because when they just tell you to move out the way like that and police are still investigating who is behind the threats in the meantime there will be an increased police presence here on campus as soon as we get any more new details we'll bring them to you live at ODU Jackie Fay News Channel 3 on the military watch the USS Forrestal the Navy's first super carrier is going to be scrapped that is the word from the Navy this week after they awarded a contract worth just one penny to dismantle and recycle the warship. Today, veterans who tried to save the Forrestal sat down only with News Channel 3's Todd Carrillo to share their memories of a ship they say was once the Cadillac of the fleet. She was the pride of the Navy. The USS Forrestal steamed into the fleet as the first supercarrier in 1955. It was just a Cadillac compared to what we'd been on. Now, 58 years later, the Forrestal is headed to the scrapyard under a contract the Navy awarded this week worth just one penny. It just uh, hurts right to the core. A day after the announcement, and this group of Forrestal veterans is meeting for their weekly lunch in Virginia Beach. Though this week, the normally happy drinks are instead a subdued toast to a ship that will soon be no more. That was a bad day yesterday. To me, it's a desecration to leave 
it to a, a, a scrapping torch. Many of these men are survivors of the Forestal's darkest day, July 29, 1967. 10.53 a.m., there was a terrible fire, fire on a flight deck, and we lost 134 men. We stayed there until it got so smoky we couldn't see anymore, and then we had to get out. Just seeing all those body bags and the smell of flesh burning has, has, has never left my mind. For years, the Forestal veterans have fought to have the ship preserved as a museum or memorial, working with both Tampa and Baltimore to house it. Neither ever materialized. Political-wise, everybody promised, them, uh, promised us the world, and it fell through. Now, with the Forestal's fate sealed, these veterans just hope her legacy will live on. She was a fantastic ship, and she made all of her commitments, and she did her job. I had four other carriers, but the Forestal was my finest. On the military watch in Virginia Beach, Todd Carrillo, News Channel 3. Well, you've heard of lightning fast internet. Well, how about laser fast? Next at 6, internet 80 times faster than what you have at home. Plus, down the drain, a Suffolk teen faces charges after what he did to a toilet. The warning signals flashed and red flags waved, but still it was too late for a Hampton Roads veteran who was scammed out of thousands. If it was up to me, I'd say I'd find a gentleman myself and, and wring the money out of him. Well, tonight, all new on News Channel 3 at 11, investigator Jessica Larche takes action to ensure you don't get fooled, too. In Virginia Beach, police have arrested three people in connection with the deadly shooting on Coach Drive earlier this month. Tremont Lane, Hakeem Smith, and Anthony Hill are all in jail tonight with no bond. They're all charged in the murder of Jamal Knight. Police found him dead outside a home. They say he'd been at the house for a party and the suspects approached him and shot him. A body found in Norfolk. News Channel 3's Dominus Brown is live where the discovery was made earlier today, right along Tidewater Drive. Dominus, what are we learning? Well, Bianca, let me tell you that investigators have wrapped things up here on the scene right behind me along Tidewater Drive, but they were here much of the day just trying to figure out what happened to a woman that died here. Investigators spent much of the day trying to get to the bottom of what happened to a woman found dead just off the edge of the pavement on Tightwater Drive and the I-64 southbound off-ramp in Norfolk. How does it make you feel? You know that you live around here and you say something It's like scary, it. but still concerned. You know, wanting to know answers. Police got a call around 1019 this morning of an adult female that was dead. Norfolk Police and the Virginia State Police Crime Scene Unit haven't released many details, but some people who live in this area say they believe the woman may have been homeless. We don't know what was trailing her, what she was involved in too, in her activities on a daily basis. You know, we don't know what to say. I just feel like you know, it's, like, it's, it's unsafe, you know? Gotta, be, gotta watch how it's going on, be like, you know, you see things like this, you worry about what's going on, you gotta worry, protect yourself, watch what's going on. So there's still very little information in regarding any suspects, also any rest or motives. We're still waiting on that from police. If you have any information, they're asking you to give them a call at the crime line at 1-888. Lock you up. Reporting live here in Norfolk along Tidewater Drive, Dominus Brown, News Channel 3. New at 6 in Portsmouth, a brown bear has been spotted around Melvin Drive and the Churchland section of the city. Police have received several calls since Tuesday night about a bear roaming around the city. Now, police say the bear does not appear to be aggressive, but they warn you, don't approach it. If you spot the bear, call police or animal control at 757-393-5300. New at 6, NASA says they've set a new record for communication in space, beaming information to and from a probe orbiting the moon at lightning speed. Well, more like laser speed. The Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, or Laddie, which was launched from NASA's Wallops Island, fired a laser to beam information from the moon to Earth, a distance of 239,000 miles, and it achieved a super fast download speed of 622 megabits per second. That is 84 times faster than the average high speed internet rate in the U.S. And until now, NASA has used radio waves to communicate with its spacecraft out in the solar system. As a probe gets farther away, well, you need more power to transmit a signal, needing more power as probes travel deeper into space. 
Maddie already set a record last week when it became the first ever rocket launched from Wallops to go beyond Earth's orbit. Live in high definition, here's your News Channel 3 Viper radar forecast with Chief Meteorologist Patrick Rocky. A little on the chilly side right now as you head out for your Thursday evening plan to the 80 degree mark, believe it or not. You did see a chance for a shower or storm on there as well, though. So hopefully we'll be able to get that out of here. If you don't like the weather, stick around. Yes, it will change. Mm -hmm. Gotta love Hampton Roads. All right, thank you, Patrick. We are back right after this. It is a night of all new shows tonight on News Channel 3, starting with two hours of comedy, then elementary at, not, at 10, rather. What is this? It's a matter of investigation. TV's most unconventional detective is on the case. Is this a man? Yes. Excellent. And he'll do anything to solve it. Maybe you could come back in an hour? No, I'm afraid I cannot. I'm thinking of taking my own life post-haste. Does that window open? But first... Unless you have a corpse I'm not aware of, you don't have a case. You need a body. You're not dead. Why can't anyone be dead today? Discover the hit drama Elementary, new tonight. Well, the Big Bang Theory gets things started at 8. Sheldon makes a big scientific breakthrough, but it may end up haunting him for the rest of his career. Then on the Millers, Nathan sees a therapist to help relieve some of the stress from having to live with his meddling mother. At 9, it's the crazy ones, then two and a half men, followed by elementary with News Channel 3 at 11. New at 6, a Suffolk teenager has been charged with vandalism for a private property after police say he intentionally clogged a toilet in a holding cell. It happened in a holding cell in the Godwin Courts building while the team was awaiting a court appearance. Now, officers say the clog was so bad it caused the toilet to leak and flood the cell. No one has said what he used to cause the clog. Because of his age, police will not release the suspect's name, but they say he will face an additional charge. And from what we're hearing, they are going to be changing the menu now with removing brand cereal off the prison oh menu. My. The, the producer upstairs said that we're going to run this story followed by some highbrow discussion of it. So <laughs> I wrong. guess that's off the table. Very that, wrong that prediction, bill. bill. Yeah. Very wrong. <laughs> Next <sighs> newscast is News Channel 3 at 11.